Hey everyone, welcome to my channel. In the last few lessons, we've been simulating the process of sending and receiving SMS with SMS Simulator. When you develop your SMS application, which can be a receiver, transmitter, or transceiver, SMPP Simulator can act as an SMS center and helps you test your app before launching into the production environment. Those previous lessons teach you how to use SMPP Simulator. When you develop your SMS application, it is better to know the theories behind SMPP protocol. You definitely need the specification of SMPP protocol. For some beginners, it could be a little bit hard and it's sometimes even frustrating to fully understand the whole technical documentation. This lesson is going to set you up so that you will be able to utilize the SMPP protocol specification and you'll be able to raise questions when you want to know certain details. In the first lesson, we've introduced this program. It basically means the message from sender goes to the SMS center and then to the receiver. It is actually an oversimplified process. We need to know that mobile network is playing a critical role between the communications. One of the most important components of the mobile network is cell phone tower, or some people might say base station. The mobile network covers a limited area. For example, if you want people all over China to use mobile phone, you need over a million base stations. So let's say. Sender sends a message to SMSC through the mobile network covering the sender. Then, SMSC delivers the message to receiver through the mobile network covering the receiver. Well, mobile network is not really the focus of the lesson, so I'm going to generalize or simplify the entire process we've just talked about and get a new diagram. Remember, in reality, apart from mobile phone, there are plenty of software, the applications and programs that can send and receive SMS. In many cases, those programs are used for sending advertisements or announcements to mobile users. Those programs are an example of ESME, external short messaging entities. When I sit in front of my computer and send an announcement to thousands of people, my computer has to have an ESME, which sends thousands of PDUs, one by one. Each PDU contains the sender number, recipient's number, the content of the announcement, and other information. Each PDU is sent from the ESME to the SMS center, and then, SMS Center delivers the messages to the mobile users according to what is specified in the PDUs. When the mobile user sends a message to my program, the message reaches the program, strictly speaking ESME, through mobile network and SMS Center. Remember, SMS Center convert the message into the PDU and deliver the PDU to ESME. If you understand this concept, I'm going to extend this diagram into a fancy one, which you can find in the first chapter of the SMPP protocol spec. I'll give you a link in the description. In this diagram, you can find mobile users, SMS centers, and ESME. Remember, the title of the lesson is The Fundamentals of SMPP. This lesson is all about the communication between SMS Center and ESME. From now on, why don't we learn to use that technical documentation or similar ones with a certain authority and covers most of the details regarding SMPP protocol? The second chapter of the spec is the SMPP sessions and talks about the communications between SMS Center and ESME. To name a few, your SMS sending program, the SMS receiver. Let's look at an example of the SMS sending program and let's see how it is communicating with SMS Center. 
Firstly, there has to be a network connection between your program and SMSC at the right IP address and at the right port. Then, ESME, your program is going to send a bind transmitter PDU to the SMSC. This PDU contains at least the system ID and the password of the transmitter. It's like your program logs in to the SMSC. After a while, the ESME receives the response from the SMS center and see whether the login is successful, strictly speaking, to see whether the bind transmitter request is successful or not. If successful, the ESME is ready to send Submit SMPDU to the SMSC. Submit SMPDU contains the message that it wants to send a certain user. After sending one, the ESME still get the response from SMSC so that the owner of the program will know what is happening to the short message. You can still ask your program to send another message and get another response. And this process goes on and on and on and on until you want to end it. Now, let's try to relate this diagram with a real transmitter program that's written in Java. First step. Establishing network connection. It is completed by making sure that both your program and the SMSC are turned on and make sure that they are interconnected through network. If you still remember, I told you to find a demo transmitter program in the fourth lesson. Let's open the source code and let me tell you. This part is implemented with this function. This part with this this with system exit function. Let's see the implementation of the bind process. Firstly, it is making a TCP IP connection at the right IP address and at the right port. at the right IP address and at the right ports, TCP IP connection. And then look at this piece of code and it is submitting a request. This request is actually a bind transmitter request and the system ID and the password is specified here. After a while, this request is gonna get a response. This response is corresponding to this part. Let's look at the function that is sending one single SMS. This one and similar to the bind transmitter request and it is submitting a submit SM request here. And this code actually corresponds to here. Actually there is a response for the submission and this one corresponds to this. As I told you, this part corresponds to the system exit function. Here. In this example, the essence of the communication is PDU. The third and the fourth chapter of the spec tells us a lot of details about it. We've just learned that PDU packs up some useful information and it is sent between ESME and SMSC. This information is organized in a certain format, which you can learn in the third chapter. And what information is packed up in a PDU? You can find the answer in the third and the fourth chapter. In our example, there are four types of PDUs, bind transmitter, Bind transmitter response, submit SM, and submit SM response. Question What are the similarities and differences between these PDUs? In the third chapter, we can learn that PDU consists of header and body.
Harder. Harder is a mandatory part of every SMPP PDU and must always be present. It means any PDU, every PDU must have a header. So these four PDUs must have headers and headers are different. The spec says SMPP PDU body is optional and may not be included with every SMPP PDU. It means not all PDUs have body, but in our example, all of these PDUs have bodies and the bodies are different. When we discuss headers, there are four parameters. Command length, command ID, command status, and sequence number. Command length is over all sides of the PDU, including header and body. Command ID identifies the PDU. In other words, when you are not sure about what kind of PDU your program has received, whether it is submit SM response or deliver SM, you have to check the command ID of the PDU. Our example is a transmitter and we know that what PDU we are sending because we initiated the transmitter session and we instantiated the submit SM PDU. However, when our program is a transceiver, it could receive at least two types of PDUs, submit SM response PDU and deliver SM PDU. In that case, we need to check the command ID and then process the received PDU with right solution. Now, let's compare the command ID. Go to the spec, go to the table of contents, PDU field definition, not this one. PDU field definition here and the command ID. We can see the command ID of the bind transmitter PDU is 2. The command ID of the submit SM response is this. The command ID of the bind transmitter response is this. Well, I'm a little bit skeptical, so I'm gonna verify it. Turn on the SMPPCM. It's here on my computer. Double click on the start SMPPCM here. And then Eclipse. I'm going to set some breakpoints. One is here. And here. Debug the program. Put your cursor over this variable. The details show up. Let's see, header. Command ID, it's two. There you go. The same as what is in the spec. And let's see the command ID of the response. Header, command ID, and, and this looks a little bit weird. I'm going to convert this decimal integer into a hexadecimal so that we can compare it with what is in the spec. I'm going to copy the value, find the system calculator, and go to the programmer's mode. Select the decimal. I'm going to paste the value here. Click on the hexadecimal. Great, it's the same as what in the spec. Let's see the submit SMPDU. As, 
other command ID and it's good. Let's see the command ID of the submit as a response. Other command ID and this looks a little bit weird. I'm gonna convert this decimal integer into a hexadecimal so that we can compare it with what is in the spec. And I'm gonna copy the value and go to the calculator, select the decimal and clear, paste value here. Click the hex. There you go, it is great. Command ID of the submit as a response is the same as what in the spec. This is pretty much the end of the lesson. I hope you've learned something. If you have any question, go to the spec and simulate on the SMPP sim. Of course, you're welcome to leave a comment. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next videos. Peace.